In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern. There is a few days of some pretty concerning severe weather ahead. Also in the long range, some more major storms that could indicate we have more major severe weather on the way later on as well. And then a cool down that is going to be present throughout the next week. However, in the long range, we do see signs of a significant warm up to a of normal summertime temperatures as we reach the midpoint of June. So a lot of exciting things coming up. I want to remind you, we did put out a vlog uh, last Sunday. I don't know what they exactly we put it out, but it is out and it is in the top right corner of your screen description and pinned comment down below. We are uploading the second vlog, which is even crazier over two and a half hours of footage that I need to edit down to around 10 to 15 minutes. That is coming out likely tomorrow, if not the next day, but I'm aiming for tomorrow. It's just a lot to edit. So I hope you guys enjoy those and check it out subscribe to the channel so many of you have been supporting it which has been just greatly appreciated let's go ahead and dive into things as we take a look at tomorrow afternoon on june 2nd we get a very summer-like day which we're in meteorological summer as of today on saturday june 1st so uh, we see a lot of thunderstorms present basically from the northern rockies through the northern plains southern plains central plains as well i don't know why yeah separated those into three separate areas Deeper south, up into the Appalachian area, Ohio Valley, uh, and a lot of your Great Lakes, eastern Great Lakes, I would say, they're featuring plenty of thunderstorms. So a wide, wide area of potential isolated and scattered thunderstorms there. For Monday on June 3rd here, we once again see a very widespread look as far as the area is expecting to potentially see thunderstorms. Uh, you're looking at everywhere from the northern plains, upper Midwest, southern plains, deeper southeast, up into the mid-Atlantic. And even the northwest here, even though most of that is likely showers, you could even see some thunderstorms in there as well, alongside some snowfall here for the Cascades. So some su uh, summertime snowfall here coming up. Uh, Tuesday here on June 4th, what we end up seeing is thunderstorm activity up and down uh, your plains areas. And then even the east, we are seeing some isolated activity in that regard. So definitely something to be on the lookout for. Wednesday on June 5th, what we're seeing here is the eastern states dealing with these thunderstorms anywhere from the plains down through the deeper south, the southeast, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, northeast, mid-Atlantic. So you're kind of catching the theme here for the beginning of summer. Uh, thunderstorms cannot really be ruled out for very many areas. It's going to be very hit or miss, but there will be isolated to scattered thunderstorms almost daily, which is what this time of year oftentimes brings. And for a lot of areas east of the Appalachian Mountains, that peaks around the July time frame. Uh, for areas in the plains, that peaks more around April, May. So that's why a lot of areas in the east, they don't see a lot of springtime thunderstorms. It takes a lot longer, especially if you're close to the coast. Uh, that can even trickle, you know, July, August time frame for the worst of your thunderstorm season and even your severe weather season. So for a lot of areas, yes, things are expected to slow down. For, but for many areas, at least from a climate perspective, uh, you are still kind of climbing up towards the worst of your severe weather potential. Uh, let's take a look here at Thursday on June 6th, and what we end up seeing is up and down the eastern seaboard. Some potential thunderstorms are present. There is a 989 millibar low pressure center over eastern Canada, which is certainly aiding in a lot of this activity. We do have a 998 over northern New York, and these are kind of working in tandem to bring this pocket of thunderstorms that is very bowed out and likely this is due to this shot of cold air that is coming in underneath this major low uh likely a very strong cold front here for these areas and we should see a pretty dramatic cool down there for thursday on the 6th and by friday the 7th all of that activity will likely move offshore and what we'll be left with is drier conditions for the most part uh, some showers if you're near the Canadian border, but a lot drier than things have been, uh, but much cooler there for Friday the 7th. Saturday here on the 8th, uh, what we're seeing is a lot of thunderstorms throughout your plains and Midwest starting again. Let me refresh this actually, because I think this model is maybe having issues there. Uh, there we go. Saturday the, the 8th here, Sunday the 9th here, we're seeing the thunderstorm activity kind of regain some steam. And then by Monday the 10th, look at this. We return to isolated and scattered thunderstorms for almost everywhere east of the Rocky Mountains. So, again, can't rule out thunderstorms anywhere. We're getting very summer-like with this pattern, according to our European model. And even by Tuesday on the 11th, we may have some more major activity here across the southern areas. 
This is uh, 10 days out, so we will take it with a grain of salt. But moving forward, uh, there should be more uh, chances of more organized systems alongside these daily isolated or popcorn thunderstorms is what a lot of people call them. They're very small, short-lived, and can be quite intense, um, but they're just all over the place, very hit or miss. Let's take a look at your European AI model. And again, we're kind of going to move past that 10-day mark and see what this suggests for the following days. And we do get a lot of activity returning to the east still for near the 15th. So 998 there for Ohio. So this is a good example of a more organized system. Also some lower pressure near the coast. We need to watch this closely because June is really a time to watch for some potential tropical activity. And I'm seeing a lot of activity here along uh, the areas between the Yucatan Peninsula and Florida. And then up the southeast coast all the way to offshore of the Outer Banks. We're seeing plenty of spots of activity. So... This could be some tropical activity to watch. We see it kind of originate here uh, around the 12th offshore of Western Florida, and then it's kind of gonna cross over and move into this area. So let's watch it closely. It hits that West coast of Florida pretty hard. And then it's off the Southeast coast is 1005. That'd be pretty weak for a tropical system, but still does look like a tropical wave to me. And then it wants to slam into kind of the East coast here. Uh, and honestly, this track here, something like this is very, very common uh, for the June time frame, you mostly see actually that track with these tropical systems. So this is very, very plausible in my opinion. This European AI model calling for this around the 15th. We'll have to look back. This is a bold, bold prediction by this model. But if this is correct, that'd be absolutely insane. And a great start to this model's kind of career, if you will. Let's take a look at the total precipitation. And we see that there is still plenty of activity to go around for the northwest there. And then really, if you take the plains eastward all the way to the eastern states, obviously we're dealing with tons of activity with these isolated thunderstorm days. Uh, so everywhere should have average to above average precipitation east of the Rockies for the most part. Total snowfall is looking quite minimalistic, of course. We do expect uh, a dusting, if anything, here for the entire Rocky Mountain range as far as the highest mountaintops, I should say. Uh, and then for the kind of uh, Washington Cascades, if you will, not the Oregon ones, but only the Washington and Canadian. Uh, we do see upwards to close to 6 to 10 inches if you're in the very highest mountaintops there, um, but more likely just a couple of inches, if anything, over the next 10 days. Let's take a look at the temperature pattern. Again, things are cooler and expected to kind of cool down and stay that way for a little bit here. This is Sunday the 9th. Uh, here is Wednesday the 12th, so still not warmed up, but here we go. Finally, as we approach that 15th time frame, seeing some consistent heat moving up into the east. Uh, and this is looking quite substantial, actually, especially in the kind of uh, north central states. So closer to 10 to 15 degrees above normal would be quite significant. And look at this. We have really all the puzzle pieces you need. We have a negative PNA out west. This colder air mass over the west is really going to help. Uh, you know, we talk about warmer air masses up here where the cold moves around it a lot of the time. But when you have a colder air mass out here, so a negative PNA, the warm air is forced around and, and up into the eastern states. And that's what we're seeing right here. So very, very strong indication of warmer temperatures near the uh, midpoint of June. You know, I say warmer, but really this would be uh, pretty significant heat, if anything. Now, for the Storm Prediction Center outlooks, let's move through day one, which is today on Saturday, June 1st. We have multiple areas in lighter greens. And that is uh, for the general thunderstorm risk areas, really. That is where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible, so heat every watch, warning, and advisory. We do have multiple areas in the darker greens as well, which is your level one marginal risk areas where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. And then for your level two slight risk areas in the yellows, we expect scattered about severe weather throughout these areas. And then we even have an enhanced risk area for the uh, Texas Panhandle, the Oklahoma Panhandle, and then up through portions of southwestern Kansas. That is where we expect a little bit more widespread severe weather to be possible. Day two here, we do have, again, a general thunderstorm risk area in the lighter green, a marginal risk in the darker green, and then a slight risk there in the yellow. That's for tomorrow on Sunday, June 2nd. And then day three here, which will be Monday, June 3rd, General thunderstorm risk area throughout a lot of these lighter green areas. Again, very, very far stretching here as we get this kind of early summertime pattern. And then your darker green there is your marginal risk area of severe weather. Let me just check the extended range to make sure we don't have anything. And we don't. So nothing to see here in the longer range as of now. 
Be sure to subscribe. We do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.